Hello, in this video we're going to go over a problem from 2021 Canadian Math Olympiad. Here is the problem. A function f from the positive integers to the positive integers is called Canadian if GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus 1 is equal to GCD of x and y. For all pairs of positive integers x and y, we want to find all positive integers m such that f of m is equal to m for every such function. Okay, so how do we go about this. So I'm going to walk you through the thought process that I had and how I ended up getting a solution. So the first thing that I do when I have problems like this involving some sort of functional inequality or functional equation, I plug in different values of x and y and see what I get. For example, the simplest value to plug in is x equals 1. So I would get GCD of f of f of 1, f of 1 plus y is equal to GCD of 1 and y and of course this is always 1. So what does that mean? It means this quantity and this quantity are always relatively prime. But this can give you every single value in the range of f except for f of 1. I was thinking that probably f of 1 is equal to 1. So let's see what happens if f of 1 is more than 1. So if f of 1 is more than 1, then I can make this one f of 1. So I can replace by f of 1 minus 1. So if I do that, on the left I get GCD of f of f of 1 and f of f of 1 is equal to 1. What that means is f of f of 1 is in fact equal to 1. So if f of 1 is more than 1, then f of f of 1 would be 1. I wasn't able to prove that f of 1 must be 1. So I thought, let's see what happens if f of 1 is, say, 2. So is it possible for f of 1 to be 2? So what that gives us is that f of 2 must be 1. The equality that we have is GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus y is equal to GCD of x and y. One obvious function that satisfies this inequality is f of x equals x because when you plug in f of x equals x you get gcd of x and x plus y is equal to gcd of x and y which is valid because of the Euclidean algorithm. So I was thinking that if I can uh, come up with an example that f of 1 is 2 and f of 2 is 1 or can I prove that that's impossible. So after 2, I can define x, f of x to be x. So let's define f of x to be x if x is greater than or equal to 3. Then we have the equality for every x and y if x is at least 3. So let's test what happens if x is 1. If x is 1, on the left we get GCD of f of f of 1 and f of 1 plus y, which is equal to f of f of 1 is f of 2 which is 1. So whatever this ends up being this is exactly 1 which does satisfy the equality. Let's plug in x equals 2 to see what we get. We get GCD of f of f of 2 and f of 2 plus y is equal to now because 2 plus y is at least 3 that would be 2 plus y so that doesn't change f of 2 is 1 and f of 1 is 2. So that's GCD of 2 and 2 plus y, which is in fact the same as GCD of 2 and y. And if x is at least 3, then as we discussed earlier, GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus y, because of the way we defined it, is in fact GCD of x and x plus y, which is GCD of x and y. So that means I can make sure that f of 1 is not 1. This m cannot be 1. Okay, so that was interesting because initially I thought f of 1 must be 1, but in fact we have an example that f of 1 isn't 1. Okay, so now I looked back at the original equality that they gave me and I plugged in other values of x and y to see what else I get. If I substitute x and y to be the same values, I would get GCD of f of f of x and f of 2x is equal to x because GCD of x and x is in fact x. So this tells us that x divides f of f of x and also x divides f of 2x. 
Now I can do the same thing if I replace y by another multiple of x. So GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus any multiple of x gives me GCD of x and nx, which is in fact x. So that tells us x in fact divides any f of any multiple of x as long as that is not exactly x. So that was interesting. So if I have something like f of 6, then I know f of 6 is divisible by 2, and f of 6 is also divisible by 3. So that tells us f of 6 is divisible by 6. So now my question was, can I show that f of 6 is equal to 6? So let's assume it's not. Let's say f of 6 is perhaps 12. Let's see if that's possible. So I plug that into the equality, so I get f of f of 6, GCD of that, and f of 6 plus y, that's equal to GCD of 6 and y. I realize I can actually kind of take turn that into something that is not equal. The equality does not hold. So let's uh, evaluate the left side. f of 6 is 12, so we get this. And I know this is divisible by 12 because of the argument that I had here that 6 divides f of 6. I can do the exact same argument to 12 divides this. If I turn this one into f of 6 plus 6, I would get this equality. But f of 12 is divisible by 12 because f of 12 is divisible by 4 and also divisible by 3 for, with the exact same argument. So this means on the left we get 12. And on the right, we get 6, which is obviously not true. So now the next question is, when can I uh, repeat the same argument? I know this one. I know this is true for every n, at least 2. So when can I go from all the divisors dividing it? So this is a divisor of nx. This is a proper divisor of nx. When can I go from proper divisors to the entire number dividing it? It looks like we should be able to prove this one. If x is not a power of a prime, then f of x must be equal to x. In order to prove this one, we'll prove the other claim that x divides f of nx first. So this would be claim one. We will prove the second claim first. So claim two is x divides f of nx for every n greater than or equal to two and of course for every x. We can prove this one by basically induction. So we can write it down as GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus n minus 1 x. I don't even need induction. This is the same as GCD of x and n minus 1 x. This side is x, so that tells us x divides both f of f of x, which I don't actually need, and also f of n x. So that proves the first claim. Now proof of claim 2. So let's assume that f is not, x is not a power of prime. So x would be a power of a prime times m, where m is greater than or equal to 2, and p doesn't divide m. I can write it down this way. So now by assumption, p to the alpha divides by claim 1, p to the alpha divides p to the alpha times f, m of, f of uh, p to the alpha times m, which is f of x. And since that happens for every prime p, this means x must divide f of x. Okay, so this proves the second, uh, this proves that f of x is divisible by x. Now we're going to prove that in fact it must be exactly x. We're going to rewrite the equality. So GCD of f of f of x, f of x plus y is equal to GCD of x and y. Now, if f of x, so suppose f of x is more than x. If that's the case, then 
we're going to replace y equals f of x minus x that yields GCD of f of f of x and f of when I replace that in here I get f of f of x that is equal to GCD of x and f of x minus x. I know x divides f of x so this would be exactly equal to x. Now if you look at f of f of x, f of x is divisible by x so that tells us f of x is also not a power of a prime. So that means f of x divides f of f of x by what we just proved. So that tells us f of x must divide this GCD which is equal to x and that tells us x must be equal to f of x. So what we just showed so far is that if x is not a power of a prime then f of x is equal to x. We also showed that f of 1 can be something other than 1. So now let's look at a, a prime power and let's see if we can prove that f of a prime power doesn't have to be that prime power. So let p be a prime and um, alpha be some positive integer. We are going to define p to the power of alpha, f of p to the power of alpha, to be something similar to f of 1 equals 2, f of 2 equals 1. So I'm going to define it as p to the power of alpha plus 1 and f of p to the power of alpha plus 1 to be p to the power of alpha and f of x equals x for everything else. If I do that, then one thing that happens is that f of f of x, if x is not p to the power of alpha or p to the power of alpha plus 1, one thing that happens is that f of f of x is x for all x. This happens for every positive integer x because f of f of p to the power of alpha is f of p to the power of alpha, which is p to the power of alpha. And f of f of p to the power of alpha plus 1 is f of p to the power of alpha, which is p to the power of alpha plus 1. So f of f of x is in fact x for every x. Now I'll have to look at f of x plus y. So it really depends. So there's basically three possibilities. If x plus y is not p to the power of alpha or p to the power of alpha plus 1, then GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus y would be GCD of f of f of x is just x and f of x plus y is y because x plus y is not either of those two which is the same as gcd of x and y. So we uh, are able to prove the equality for that case. If x plus y is equal to p to the power of alpha then gcd of f of f of x and f of x plus y is equal to f of f of x is x, f of x plus y is f of p to the power of alpha which is p to the power of alpha plus 1 but x is less than p to the power of alpha so if I take the GCD of this one and the power of p I can drop one of the p's because it's impossible for x to be uh, p to the power of alpha plus 1 this is the same as GCD of x and p to the power of alpha which is the same as GCD of x and x plus y which again by Euclidean algorithm is the same as GCD of x and y. Finally, if x and y satisfy x plus y equals p to the power of alpha plus 1, then GCD of f of f of x and f of x plus y is going to be equal to GCD of um, f of f of x is x, f of p to the power of alpha plus 1 is p to the power of alpha, now x is less than p to the power of alpha plus 1 so this is the same as GCD of x and p to the power of alpha plus 1 because of similar argument that we had up there and this is the same as GCD of x and x plus y which is the same as GCD of x and y.
So what did we show here? We showed two things here. The first one was f of m must be equal to m if m is not a prime power. The second thing that we showed is that f of m is not equal to m for some f, for some Canadian f, if m is a prime power. So that means all of the numbers that they want are the ones that are not prime powers. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I will see you in the next video.